Okay, so um, the screws have all been finished and fitted, as can be seen. I put a slot in with a fret saw and it screwed the crane on quite nicely. I've lacquered the plates, I have to polish them um, with some new lacquer I've been using and um, hopefully it'll stay like that for a long time to come. The clock itself was very rusty when I got it, all the arbors were rusty. I soaked them in um, evapor rust for 24 hours uh, and then give them a quick clean up with a grey scrot sprite and they've come up quite nice no rust on them anywhere um, so I'm quite pleased with that the hands were rusty as well I don't know whether you can see that very well but um, the rust has come off but uh, they need re -bluing. not the end of the world a job to do but I'll get the movement back together first and um, and go from there because I always run the movement without putting the uh, the face and hands and everything on just to make sure everything's okay because if it's not there's less to take apart when um, when you have to take it apart again but it should be quite nice now I've polished the pivots up, or I say polished, I burnished the pivots with no real rust on them which was lucky but uh, main of the rust was on the arbors itself the pinions were had a little bit of surface rust but nothing major so the next job is to put it all together this being a worth it's very handy that you can put it all together but without the anchor because it's got a little anchor bridge which is nice so it's not too difficult to put it together and make sure it all runs um, smoothly with a couple of clicks before I go any further it's just a matter of putting all the bits in again the second wheel goes in before the first wheel because um, it's um, it goes underneath without the anchor which is very nice and just a matter of lining everything up carefully just don't squeeze it together just hold it together while you um, when you put everything in in its place Just the escape wheel now holding everything up. I do it with pliers because I haven't got a very good grip on my hands and uh, I just find it easier with pliers as long as you don't give it too much pressure. You don't want to bend the pivots. Is that one in? That one in. Look at that. These are Once you've got all the bits together, just a matter of putting some pins in. So the nice thing about it is you can put the pins in, you haven't got to worry about taking them out again. For um after checking, make sure it goes with just a couple of clicks. I do replace the pins but not until I know everything's all right and then I let the main spring down and replace a pin at a time but if it's all got to come apart again there's no point in replacing the springs the next thing is to put all the click together
means there's... <sighs> click, click spring, click screw, and I would imagine it's that one. That's the shortest one. I always tweak the um, the spring a little bit as well when I put it back together. I'll show you that in a second. Let me just get this started, and then I'll show you what I do. <clears throat> I much prefer the. Um, the JUF click spring because it's got another extra hole there with a tab on it that um, the uh, spring goes into and it can't move. Now all I do is get the spring, I don't know whether you can see it in there can you, get the spring and just give it a, a little tweak up a bit. Clicks there, so we'll put that on next. A little dab of oil on the on the screw, so um, it doesn't seize up on you. Don't need a lot, just a little dab. to it just to tighten it up. Can't do it with that because the spring is in the way. Don't want that moving. So that's the nice thing about JUS with the extra little hook on it, it can't do that. click and we better put the bridge on as much the, um, the click screw so, oh. so I should imagine that's the correct one I've put all these screws in vapor rust as well because they were a bit um, rusty so as long as you don't leave them in there too long it's fine but if you leave them in there too long they go black something to do with the releasing of carbon or something. Now you take the slack out the 
the spring two clicks and that's moving not very well so I think that needs to come apart again but it is moving so there's a bit of friction there somewhere give it one more click and it's still not free enough so it needs to come apart again but um, two clicks if that spins then you know it's fine okay I've had it apart again just to um, check everything was as it should be because there seemed to be a bit of friction and it seems fine now two clicks and away it goes but I didn't want to do that on on air because um, it's a pain having to take it all apart again so the next thing is put the the anchor in which uh, with this is very easy I say it's very easy but getting in the hole to start with it comes up through there locate it on the pin there's the bridge goes on with a curve facing downwards it's nice now everything's lacquered because I can do it without putting gloves on sure everything's located as it should be just a couple of screws hold it in place line up for the other one normally what I do is um release the pins take the pins at the top take the uh, loosen the pins at the bottom so I can just open the movement very slightly and um, insert the anchor give it a couple of turns just to make sure it releases don't know whether you can see that but it's releasing nicely dropping a tooth each way which is nice so now it's put in the motion work in it has a torsion spring this is, looks like a homemade one but it does the job so I'm not going to change it that sits on there with the the concave part facing outwards and it needs to sit on that um, shank on the arbor you see when I lift that up it's coming up with it so that's fine then the cannon pinion then the minute wheel you can see now why the curve has to be facing downwards on that um, anchor bridge yeah, that's fine put the half bridge on and two screws hold it on a lot of a lot of the clocks of this era just had one a screw and a pin but uh, this one has two but it's held on just the same so not too much of a bother just pinch them up check those as well while I'm at it 
Then it's a matter of putting the dial on. Shame I couldn't get this dial any better. It's got some nasty marks in it, but it's silvered, screen printed, then lacquered. So if you start using anything abrasive on it, it just takes the screen printing off, which uh, would then look, would look even worse. But it looks its age. came off so it should go on just a slight uh, a slight bend on the, the pins I don't think they're not totally straight Doing it all methodically in order. Oh, more fingers and thumbs today. This is easier than doing the, some of the more modern ones that got them silly little rings with a screw in. They're a right pain to do. I put the saddle on. Again, it's lacquered. I just give it a quick clean up and a lacquer. Just stops it tarnishing. <clears throat> and it's nice not having to use gloves because uh, my hands aren't the best. And um, no feel really with gloves on. Oh, I don't get any feel with them anyway. Uh, use my little tool to pinch them up. And while I'm at it, I'll pinch them up. So I know they're all pinched up. Check those as well. Can't do that one with that. Now it's just a matter of putting the hands on. first 12 o'clock in the minute hand <laughs> I've already cut a pin for it that one's a little nip off of there it looks a bit unsightly being quite that long better always set both hands at 12 o'clock and you know it's um you know it's right as it goes round 
everything goes round together. Now it's just a matter of mounting it on the base, which again has been ready lacquered, all stripped and cleaned and polished. Again with the knobs, I've done that with a bit of lacquer. slightly out so we just loosen that one loosen that one let's go in get that in the right position back up again now we're ready for the um, torsion spring I won't do a video on that because um, I've already done one and um, although I've already done a video on putting a clock in beat I will do it with this um, because the other one I didn't quite have everything in the right position and you couldn't see the, the bit I was adjusting at the top so I'll be back in a minute okay now the clock's together it comes to setting the beat I'm doing this again because um, the previous one I did wasn't um, I didn't get the whole clock in the picture um, so the torsion springs on the pendulums on uh, there's various different methods for beat setting this has just got a square block that sits in um, the saddle and um, to set the beat you just twist that either way um, some of them have this sort of arrangement with a screw on top some of them have this bit up there rather than underneath so um, they're normally a friction fit um, there is a tool you can get to uh, to adjust the beat but I find it next to useless so what I've done is uh, modified a pair of pliers um, so that goes nicely round and you can twist it if you need a little bit of leverage um, because you, the very smallest amount makes a lot of difference so to set the beat it's just a matter of turning the pendulum you can either watch the escape wheel drop a tooth or like I have you you can have a um, a beat amplifier so you just need to turn it till you see a tooth drop or hear the click there as soon as you hear the click stop steady the pendulum and let it go there's the other clip and it's about half an inch over swing so there's no need for me to adjust that because that's pretty well in beat the click and about half an inch click just a fraction over half an inch so there is a very very slight bit of adjustment needed So it's just a matter of a slight tweak in the direction that has got the least overswing. So if the least overswing is anti-clockwise, 
then you turn that very slightly anti-clockwise and vice versa and then just let it run there's the click there's the click there are, you do hear other clicks with a beat amplifier but it's not the main click if you get flutter which is more than one tooth dropping at a time you'll notice that because the time will run on quite considerably um, then you just need to raise the fork up about a mil and try that that should stop any flutter um, hope that makes sense to everybody thank you very much please subscribe to my channel thank you